Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're looking at what is basically a must-have add-on for Blender if you are doing any kind of painting inside of Blender. It's something called Uchi Paint. This is, uh, again, a completely free plugin. I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to use it. Combined with the awesome uh, improvements to the painting tools inside of Blender itself, this one is impressive in what it enables you to do. It gets you very close to that substance painter-like workflow. First, you want to go ahead and grab it. Go to Get Extensions under Preferences and then up here what you're going to start search for is UCU. So Uchi Paint is available right there and then make sure that it is installed. So once that is done, uh, it's super simple to work with. I'm not even going to sacrifice this default cube. I shall use him for our example. So once it is installed here, hit N to bring up your um, your panel over here, your tools menu, and you'll notice here there's this quick Yusu Paint node setup, and that's exactly what we want. So now you've got a couple of different options here. You can pick uh, the painting structure you wish to work with, so you've got a choice between a diffuse workflow, so color and ambient occlusion, roughness, and normal, uh, principled workflow, like a PBR workflow, like so, uh, and then you have emissive. Uh, so we're going to go back here. We'll stick with principle. Uh, you can have it uh, do an ambient occlusion map or not. Up to you. And then go ahead and click OK. And now what it's done is basically created a um, Photoshop-like layer system for you. And this is super powerful. And we're only going to scratch the very surface of what this is capable of. But I come down here and let's show um, generally what you would do is use this with textures. Now, you've got a bunch of options right here. We can create a new layer and we can create a variety of different layers. So for example, here I could come in and create a brick layer like so. And then you'll You'll see it comes in like this. Uh, we've got control over all the various different settings we might do for that. So, for example, uh, we can create, change the, the frequency, uh, the offset of our bricks, uh, and so on. Of course, we can change the color. So, that is, um, you just basically start layering things together. So, again, come down here, and now I could do a solid color, and let's make that solid color blue. And this is going to basically just overwrite that other layer because, once again, this is a layering-based system. So you're drawing one thing over top of the other. Generally, not exactly what you're going to want to do. So instead, what you might do is come down here. And now we're going to do a different solid color. And what we're going to do this time with an image map. You'll notice there's also color ID, edge detect map, or vertex map. Uh, but we're going to stick here with the image map. So it's going to create this mask for us. Uh, if you're doing normal map work, you can go ahead and turn 32-bit uh, float on as well. Uh, and then you've got other options here. So now we've got this other layer on top. Now I should actually come in here. Let's change the color. So this is going to be red. And now with that color checked, so you see here, uh, we've got channels. We have a single channel here, and that is our color channel. But the most important thing here is we have this mask layer. Uh, and the mask layer enables us to do, so come over here, and I'll actually show you the mask. So let's drop this over here. We will go over to our image editor like so. So here, let's pull up the mask. So the mask is black. So anywhere that this is drawn uh, is going to show nothing. So we've got a red layer being controlled, entirely black layer. Come here into our paint mode, and you're going to see now what I can do is basically come on here, uh, pick our paintbrush. So let's do an airbrush here, make it a little bit bigger, make it weaker, and then wherever I paint, so their default, I'm painting black, so that's not really doing anything. I'll hold down Control, so we'll paint with the white instead. And there you see, like so. And then when I let go, you'll notice over there, our map is updating. So that is pretty cool. Basically, it's adding layering functionality to Blender. And on top of that, you're going to notice right now we're painting with uh, Mix. I could also have done an Add or a Subtract or multiply, and you're going to get a much different result. So again, if you're used to working uh, with painting layers, that's your, your typical blending modes are all available here as well. So far, that is just the color setting. We could also have come in here and said, OK, let's make this uh, metallic and roughness map. And then for each one of these, we could drill into it and say, OK, let's lower that down. And for this one, we could increase that one up. And there's some even more cool uh, capabilities you could do here. So you can actually come in here, and I could say, um, Let's change the hue and saturation so I could add some saturation or remove it like so. Uh, and you can also do that globally over here, by the way. So you got the option to come in here so I could do like a, a brightness and contrast setting here and you can change the values there. Now, what you're normally going to do with this is work with, I do that all the time since they changed this setup. All right, let's just drop that down there. Uh, you're going to work with, um, uh, materials generally. So let's come back here and we'll show you that process instead. So here we are, a new default cube. Again, to get things set up, super simple. Basically just say, boom, create. All right, so there we go. We got no layers right now. And now what I'm going to do is come on down here and I've already set up 
uh, an asset library. So I'll go to asset library and pick one of my various different materials that's available here. So like, for example, I got a base cobblestone. I'm gonna come here and I'll say, okay, let's go ahead and add that in, make it as a new instance. And this is going to actually be our base layer. So we don't need to add any masking or anything like that. And then boom, just go ahead and create it like so. Now, one thing you may wish to do with this is uh, tile it. So let's lock everything together. You're gonna notice all of the tools are available in the same spot over here. Uh, you have control again over how everything is working together. So all your various different channels. So right now it is set up normal as a bump. So we could go here and, and change the, uh, the intensity of that. I'll hold down shift to do it a little bit less so. So you got all of those controls available over there for the various different pieces. And again, this is a layering system. So now that we've got our base layer here, we can go ahead and create another one. So here, I'll go ahead, use paint and open material image to layer. And then this time we are going to add a mask. Uh, and then we can, again, you pick the resolution of what you want to do and go on and then say, all right, so boom. There we go. So we've added our new layer with a mask. That default mask was uh, entirely black. So we come in here, uh, select our mask, this guy right here. Uh, and then we go over here into uh, the texture painting mode. And then again, just paint it in. So wherever we want one thing to show up, and then we can have it layer through. Again, what you would often do is have it a bit more like this, a bit more like this, a bit less like that. And then you basically can start blending them in again you can erase what you don't want to have through and it is the ultimate layering tool and again all your traditional layering features are here so if you did not want it to be uh blending like so you could have it instead so let's go here channels color uh let's make that an overlay instead and then you're gonna see a much different result as you are painting. Super powerful tool. You can also paint directly to your normal maps if you wish. Uh, it's the combinations of things super strong here. Now, another thing you may have noticed when I was going over here is you've got these options. I can actually add new layers to bake out uh, things like your normals, your ambient occlusion map, and so on. So all your color banking stuff is in here as well. So there is so much more to this tool than I'm showcasing today, but the biggest thing that you want to take away from this is it really expands the functionality of uh, what a blender painting can do by adding this really powerful layering system on top of things. Again, you have these global changes that you can make over here. So again, we wanted to jack the brightness up. Uh, we can do that for the whole thing. Oops, that's a little bit too much. Like so. And then, so we can increase the brightness, lower or increase the contrast and so on. So you got these global options available. Uh, one thing you'll need, you'll notice when you're working with this stuff, so let's come on down here and go to the uh, shader editor, you'll notice it's actually setting up this Usu paint material. So it's all pretty transparent to you. There's not a lot of really magical stuff you need to do behind the scenes. You basically just start working with it and it's like working with layered painting like you would in most other editing systems, which is again, a very cool feature. So if you're interested in checking this one out, again, the easiest way to grab it, it is now available as a Blender extension. So that is come in here, go to your edit, preferences, Git extensions, and it'll be available right there. Uh, you can also download it as a zip and install it the old fashioned way if you wish. This guy is getting constantly updated. So the last one was February the 15th. New features, and they're like pretty much major new features. This is, again, one of those must add tools in my humble opinion. It really does give you substance painter-like controls over uh, the Blender. Uh, and yeah, again, I'm only scratching the surface what it's actually capable of. As you'll notice here, it is also available as, um, uh, it's an open source project, so GPL v3 license. So if you want to go ahead and contribute to it, you can do so. So you see there are a handful of contributors on top of the uh, major guy behind it. And even better, it's documented. So if you want to get into it in more detail, there are things I didn't cover today, such as, again, baking out those various different channels. So if you want to export out to Unreal Unity or Godot with ambient occlusion maps, etc., it's got all that baking built in there. So if you want to learn how to bake, all the baking tools are in here big channels, you've got controls over all the various different modifiers that are available, uh, more detail on maskings, you've got new options and features in there, such as a decal layer. So if you want to put like bolts or such over, super imposed over your object, you can do that here as well. Uh, Usu Paint is one of those super powerful tools, uh, kind of almost like should be out of the box. Uh, definitely one of those things, if you want to do texture painting directly inside of Blender, if you want to get that substance painter type approach to, to working, you definitely want to check out Usu Paint. So let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.